uh, in previous video actually uh, we had solved a problem where we had changed our limit according to the demand of the angle of the trigonometric function there was tan and the angle was x minus a and we changed our limit as x minus a there right so here that is why I'm giving this problem here again you need to change your you need to change your limit according to the demand of your angle right and why and how we are going to solve here but in the present time if you want to directly solve by plugging the value of x as a zero then what you're going to get let me show you once you plug the value of x tends to zero then it will be sine a times x will be zero so a times zero that will be zero so sine zero that is going to be zero and here also c times x that is x will be zero then it will be c uh, times zero that is zero and sine zero that is again zero again you're going to get some undeterminate value and this is not the way to solve the limit or this is not the way to find the limit of any trigonometric or any kinds of functions All right so we need to use some some things here some operation we need to do maybe algebraic op uh, operations maybe trigonometric operations whatever we, we can do but this all should be according to the rules and your finally your denominator should not get zero when you plug the value of limit All right so here what I'm going to do I'm putting a limit as x tends to zero and here this is sine ax right so I'm also writing here sine ax and I'm uh, actually dividing by ax from my side because in my standard formula of sine it is limit when theta tends to zero sine theta over the theta equals to one I mean to say when angle tends to zero sine angle over the angle equals to one and if you talk about the uh, cos sine cosine then it will be when theta tends to zero cosine of theta equals to one so to use this appropriately right this formula and this formula appropriately I'm going to divide by the ax so I must have to multiply by the ax also right and again times this cos bx cos bx and then whole divided by this sine cx this whole divided by sine cx right so in the next step what I'm going to do here limit when x tends to 0 right sine ax over ax I'm putting as it is right sine ax over the ax right and then cos bx I'm putting as it is cos bx right and what about this ax I left this ax but there is a reason why I left it right and first I'm writing here sine cx and then I'll tell you why I write there uh, I'm separating so my sine cx is here right my sine cx is there so what I'm doing here I'm dividing by the cx and therefore I need to multiply by the cx also here and this ax is here I'm writing here ax now you are getting me so here what is going to be cancelled out yes this x and x is going to be cancelled out that is why I write this ax a little bit uh, away from here right because uh, this sine and cos are in the standard form see sine angle over the angle right angle over the angle cos angle right this is in the standard form here also sine angle over the angle I mean cx is my angle so here is also cx my angle uh, I think you understand this x and x will cancel out and a over c that is my constant so I can take out that constant outside also that's not the matter right so a by c and now limit x tends to 0 sine ax over the ax I can separate the limit also right and then again limit x tends to 0 oh set why my pen isn't writing properly it is cos bx right and then whole divided by sine cx over cx and it will be limit here limit when x tends to 0 now here what I want to tell you now as I told you that according to the demand of the angle right according to the demand of the angle you might have to change the limit here x tends to 0 but my angle is ax and ax so when I mean to say when x tends to 0 automatically ax tends to 0 right if x tends to 0 I can easily say that ax tends to also 0 if x equals to 0 almost very close to 0 then definitely with whatever the number you're multiplying that you will get almost very close to 0 here 0 is exactly not exactly but 
a little infinitely small difference is there between the zero and the x values right so this is actually ax will also tends to zero and same thing here my angle is bx right here my angle is bx and here is my limit is x so I can say that here when x tends to zero definitely bx will also tends to zero and similarly here my angle is cx right so cx will also tends to zero when x tends to zero so now my formula is go, uh, my this whole expression is going to be some some standard value it is going to get right so first I'm writing a by c limit ax tends to zero sine ax over sine ax over ax well, my pain is not writing properly I'm sorry oh my god times again limit bx tends to zero cos bx and then whole divided by right this is my limit x tends to zero now this x in the place of x I'm going to write cx right so this will be now limit when cx tends to zero sine cx over the cx right and now see here our standard formula is limit when angle tends to zero sine angle over the angle equals to one so here now see here in this present scenario limit when angle tends to zero sine angle over the angle so this quantity is going to be one right and again limit when angle tends to zero cos of angle right cos of angle equals to one and here also when angle cx tends to zero sine angle over the angle will be also one and this a by c as it is a by c so here this whole quantity this whole quantity is one so finally my answer is a over c that's my limiting answer right like this you need to solve the problem according to the situation and the demand of the angle of the trigonometric function right yeah trigonometric ratio is my a uh, sine ax means angle of the sine was ax so i changed the limit as ax to to compare properly exactly with my standard result because when angle tends to zero at the time only sine of the angle over the angle is one you must understand this what does it mean and same for the cos and here this cx all right so i think you understand how to change the limit uh, depending on the situations depending on the demand of the trigonometric ratio all right and use the standard formula and get the value get the limit all right i hope you understand this and uh, uh, if you have any problem you can send me you can mail me and if there is uh, any more doubt you can please comment uh, probably other friends who is watching the videos may solve your doubts or if I'll get time definitely I'll reply you back right so we'll be meeting in the next video with the more problems that will give you more concept to find out the limit and then we'll jump to the derivative all right so bye bye